There was an epic moment that happened after the game yesterday. Obviously, a press conference will take place after a horrific loss where coaches have to stand in there and take the questions, the hard questions, and answer from where they see at that exact moment. Nick Sirianni had to chat about his future after the Eagles lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mike Tomlin had to talk about his future whenever uh, you know they lose to the Bills and everybody's been kind of speculating that maybe he'll step down or go somewhere else. Here's Mike Tomlin answering Brooke Pryor's question about his contract situation after the Steelers lose to the Buffalo Bills in convincing fashion yesterday. Anyone? Mike, you have a year left on your contract. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. <coughs> Can we run that one more time? How about him looking around? Because anyone, that was the end of this whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we talked about the game. We talked about the plays. I assume there was some... Pointed questions about players. Didn't really get to see the entire press conference, mm -hmm. to be honest. Because once I saw this clip, I needed to see nothing else. Mm -hmm. Here's Brooke Pryor after, you know, last question, anyone? Anyone? Mike, you have a year left on your contract. <laughs> hey. One half of the hammer, God, Cowboys tone digs. Obviously, diehard Pittsburgh Steelers fan have been your entire life. What did that moment tell you? You know what it told me? Hmm. Told me I don't want to answer these questions right now. Yeah. Okay. The boys and I just experienced a devastating loss with the way Mason Rudolph had been playing and the way our run game had been going mm -hmm. and the way our defense, even though TJ Watt was not on, our record's not good without TJ Watt. We could have put on a much better performance than we certainly did here to end this particular season. I don't want to talk about my contract right now. I'm devastated. What did you take away from that? Yeah, Coach T was bummed out. Okay. And in that moment, he didn't want to talk about the future because. I don't even know if he knows what the future is because I, I don't know if anybody knows what the future is because there's been rumblings of him walking away and stuff like that. Now the team has come out like Cam Harry would come out and talk like that doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Um, but that's that's probably not the time uh, to ask Coach T that question. If, mm. I, if I had uh, – he's going to have an end of – Good always, question, Al Brooks. Yeah. 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 Sure, yep. sure, but he always has an end of season press conference too. That's not going to be the last time that they get to talk to Coach T. Um, but yesterday in a whole – you know, there was a couple plays, uh, the Pickens fumble, which they immediately scored the next play on a seam route to Kincaid, and then the pick in the end zone, uh, which was, you know, just unfortunate, and that's 14 points right there. Other than that, I thought the boys played hard, you know, it was, uh, yeah, that was just, like, you score there 14-7, they, and they cut it to 24-17 in the fourth quarter, but Josh Allen was just kind of too much, and that was kind of the whole thing about the moving the game the Steelers fans kind of knew when you move the game and you give Josh Allen versus even though Mason didn't play bad it's just that one play there and like as a season as a whole they were 10 and 7 you know but everyone knew kind of that there was never a chance they were winning a Super Bowl with that team um and that's kind of been the case since 2017 when we lost the AFC championship the Patriots and then Ben <laughs> got hurt it just it's mediocrity right now and uh we don't know where we're gonna go and I I, I, I tweeted this morning I have no idea what's gonna happen with the Steelers but I have Exact. I know exactly what's going to happen with the Steelers. I assume Coach T's back next year, and I assume Kenny's going to be starting. Okay. And I'm actually more confident in the offense right now than I am the defense, which says a lot. Well, T.J. Watt didn't play, so that can't be how you exactly view the defense. T.J. Watt led the NFL in yeah. sacks this year. He's a game wrecker. Mm -hmm. yeah. So whenever he's not on the field, the Pittsburgh Steelers do not do well. That is just kind of classic One in 11. Pittsburgh Steelers without T.J. Watt, which T.J. Watt should potentially go in and renegotiate another contract. Yeah, should. Uh, yeah. Might have a little bit of leverage, even though that's not what it's always about in this entire thing. But whenever you you say you know exactly what's going to happen, Coach T is going to be back. Yep. Kenny Pickett's going to be the starter and yep. everything. Mm. Jay Glazer saying that Mike Tomlin might step down and might step away yep. and might take a breather. Or the conversation that Mike Tomlin might end up on another team, might get traded away from the Pittsburgh Steelers because he is still under contract if he wanted to coach, which leads me to nine-year NFL vet, Darius J. Butler, D. Butch. Sure. Uh, I talked to Stephen A. Smith this morning on first take, and I said um, – because he said the Cowboys collapse is obviously much worse than what the Eagles did. Sure. Eagles go 10 and 1, then 1 and 6 down a stretch. Embarrassing for the Philadelphia Eagles, to be honest. That's not cool. And how Jason Kelsey got sent out is the exact opposite of the type of player in human that Jason Kelsey was, which kind of mm -hmm. sucks. And how the city of Philadelphia is. Mm -hmm. but yeah. it, it, that's yeah. just a brutal. That kind of sucks the way that whole thing went. But he said the Cowboys, obviously, was devastating because that wasn't supposed to happen. At home, they were supposed to win. Now, Mike McCarthy might leave. So I asked him, I said, uh, are you firing Mike McCarthy and hiring Bill Belichick to be your head coach down there? And he said, you only fire Mike McCarthy if you can get Bill Belichick or Mike Tomlin. I had no idea mm. that Mike Tomlin's name Whoa. is now being added to the 
Bill Belichick, Pete Carroll, Jim Harbaugh, Mike Tomlin potentially being available. He is questioned on his future, and uh, this was his reaction. Anyone? Mike, you have a year left on your contract. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on that, Lombo, and just kind of the state of the Steelers and, and how they should move forward? I, I mean, look, that, that that was easy for him. I mean, he's not – I mean, he just got beat in a tough yeah. game. Under man, didn't have his best player on defense. I thought they gave great effort, mm -hmm. you know, and I think sometimes we just judge the scoreboard. You know, Walsh wrote a book called The Score Takes Care of Itself, and if you think you're going to find a better coach than Mike Tomlin, good luck. Now, I know all you Steeler fans are upset, and certainly he can rearrange his offensive staff or perhaps add defensive coaches to his staff, but I don't think you're going to go out there and say, this coach is better than Tomlin. We need to bring him in. I just think people get bored so easily. You know, people complain about offensive coaches, but, but when – they get bored and won't call the same play again, right? And same thing with fans. They get bored with winning or not winning enough. So I, I, I think if you second order think this one, where are you going to find a better coach than Mike Tomlin? And really, when you ask that question, did you think he was going to say, well, let me think. I'm going to take some time. And uh, come on. Like, that was stupid. You know, when you ask stupid questions, you get a response like that. Today or tomorrow, when you do, when he does meet with the press, Bingo. that's the time to handle that. I mean, the guy just lost yeah. a tough game. He froze his butt off out there. You know, I, I mean, like, he's trying as best he can. He's collecting his thoughts. Plus, he's worried about those guys in the locker room. It ain't about him. Sirianni said the same thing whenever he was asked about his future. He said, that's not for right now. <laughs> like, I got to go talk to my coaches and do a locker room that has obviously not had the greatest final two months. I appreciate them handling it that way. I appreciate Sirianni answering. Yeah. I appreciate Tomlin just walking it off. Mm -hmm. That's one of the greatest moves I've ever seen at a press his conference. Eye, his eye control in that thing was the best. Like, oh, his eyes up when he left. I mean, it, it was, was so great. quick. Can it we run so that good. one more time? <laughs> we, this will be the fourth time we've run this already in 30 minutes. <laughs> Worth it. Anyone? Mike, you have a year left on your contract. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you have a year. <laughs> from the Yinzers having to plow the snow mm -hmm. out of the seats oh, before man. the game yep. yeah. to Mike Tomlin exiting the press conference the way he did from beginning to end, the Yinzers showed yeah. up yes, last they night. Did. Thank you for a pretty boring Super Wild Card weekend with these games yeah. being Ooh, boy. absolute blowouts. That's a real deal. The stories have been basically everything going on around the NFL.